York and Kingston, Jamaica, Johnny Rotten gave me his first television interview since 1976. John, uh, are you going around London incognito at the moment? Yeah, this is my disguise. What is it? Where'd you get the hat from? Got it in Disneyland. Mad hat is that. What happened to the ten and six? I threw it away, because <laughs> it cost a bit more than ten and six. Now, you split up with the pistols. How are you occupying your time? Boringly. What's stopping you forming another band or doing something? It's called Malcolm McLaren. As soon as I get him off my back, I'll be able to continue. Until then, I can't release anything without him taking a great big fat share of the profit. Would you like to start another band? Yes, I am. I'm rehearsing like, all the time with loads of people. And if there's anybody out there who's interested in working with me, it's fine. Now, when you Give went to Jamaica, ring. was it to, to look for black musicians to do... No, just to help Virgin sign up bands. A lot of people think that maybe your first record be a reggae record. A lot of people are totally wrong. <laughs> but you have formed a band already? No. You've been, but you're rehearsing with people? Yeah. They change every night. <laughs> For How... obvious reasons. Personality differences. So, although you still have a contract with Malcolm, you are trying to get out of it? Well, he broke it, not me. What? He threw you out? Yes. Well, <laughs> he's gone down in press of saying so. But is it depressing being in a situation where you can't put a record out? Well, of course it is. It's the only business I was anything good at. But do you think Malcolm's trying to avoid you? Oh, isn't that obvious? But how can you resolve the situation? Kill him. Well, apart from uh, getting a bread knife out, how else can you... Oh, no, I mean subtly. <laughs> Car accident and all that. That'd be good fun. Go down well on the pavers as well. Real good publicity stunt. Next question. Do you think that um, the new wave... <laughs> <laughs> I was always a mug. It's a bit hard living up to your image sometimes. What image? I never thought I had one. Well, what do you think? I change from day to day. Well, now we have a following. Every time you appeared on stage, the music press wrote up precisely what you wore, and they said tonight he came on in an Oliver Twist outfit, or tonight he wore a straw oh, that's, hat. That's pathetic, isn't it? Do you think they ever paid enough attention to? They were more interested in the clothes and the colour of me poxy hair. What's happened to, not the fans, but the people that, the followers, if you like, all the people that suddenly started making bands? Now the Sex Pistols are split up. What are they doing? They're making their own music? I have or, no idea. I mean, do you, go, do you see them at all? So there's nowhere to go in London, is there? I mean, like, the problem now is a lot worse than when we started. If anything, we've made it worse. What, We're what? responsible for destroying London. <laughs> <laughs> no, how long do you think it will be, seriously, before you'll be performing? Six stage? months. And what's the... Do you keep in touch with any of the people that you played with before? Anybody in the band? No. They never bothered to ring me, so I won't ring them. Well, who are your friends now? The same friends I've always had all my life. Who do you want to sit on the seat? <laughs> What are you writing songs about now? The same sort of things. Nothing's changed. What sort of things? Nothing ever does. Well, you don't think that... Oh, misery, depression, self-indulgence. All those trite little <laughs> obsessions. <laughs> but you've got a flat in Chelsea now. Yeah, just about. They complain about the noise. I mean, how unfair. What did you get out of being the Sex Pistols, then? I went to see After World, didn't I? <laughs> I thought that was a bit of all right. What else? A lot Apart of misery. Apart from seeing half the world, not <laughs> the other half. A lot of misery. Put into a position I didn't really like. What was that? I mean, to live up to an image that's... Yeah, some... being treated as, like, someone different from, like, normal Joe Bloggs. You know, it ain't, it ain't the person that changes, it's people's attitudes towards them. Does it annoy people, you? Like, yeah. People just think you've gone to America, therefore you're such a star, it ain't true. I'm, uh, the sun shines out of. 
And what else did you get out of being in the band? Did you get any money? No, practically nothing. But you did well in the charts. I mean, you sold a lot of records. Yeah, but you always know who collects the cash. Now you're going to start another band. Would you do the same things again? I mean, Cheap would you still go camera. on top? On top of... Now you're starting another band, right? And you've been through two years in a band that broke up. This time, would you do the same things? Like, would you go on top of the pops this time round? I mean, have things you've done before? No, nothing's changed. I don't. I never want you to go on top of the pops. They bung that film on without like. Asking, which I thought was like really nasty. You know, it, like Malcolm did loads of things like that, which bugged me. Didn't you have much control over things in the end? Yeah, that's why we split. <laughs> oh, what? You heard the ultimate <laughs> word. Yeah, but he's retained. Your hair looks like rhubarb. <laughs> but he has retained control over you. Yeah, for the moment. Did you make any money in the end, though? No, we lost a lot in America that, that tour. Thank God, in a way. I mean, like, you know, two dollars to get in is, like, over there, just a joke. It's, like, 30 pence. Yeah. I think that was good. So you misjudged it. I mean, Malcolm misjudged it as a way of making money. Yeah, the poor fool fell flat in his face. <laughs> Although Johnny denies that his new group will play reggae, his interest in Jamaican music is well known. And it's an interest that's been shared by many new wave